there's one. Crap! <laughs> I missed you. What's going on, guys? This is D Jensen, and I'm gonna try to show you how to fish a floating worm. All right, so before we get sitting down and talking about how to rig this sucker, I want to get something through some people's heads because I've had this question several times over the years. A floating worm really does not float. What it does is it sinks very slowly. Um, everybody worries about, oh, my worm's not staying on the top. Da, da. This is not a topwater bait. Your hook is always going to sink your worm. So what I'm talking about is I'm talking about a worm that has lighter buoyancy, so it doesn't have as much salt in it as other plastic worms. A zoom trick worm that is not the super salty one is what I'm talking about. Methylate, big bright colors. The hook is gonna drag it down to the bottom. So understand that if you're looking for a floating worm, stop looking for a floating worm. <laughs> you're looking for a straight tail worm with little to no salt in it is what you're looking for. All right, let's go sit down and talk about how to rig this sucker. All right, so let's talk about how to rig it. I'm going to rig this thing myself personally on a bait caster. It's going to be a seven, one, seven foot one medium power bait caster. This is a 13 omen. I'm going to have a, a seven, three to one or eight, one to one gear ratio reel. 15 pound fluorocarbon is just fine because that's usually what I have on those rods and those reels, but you can go down to 12. Now, if you're not comfortable throwing light baits on a bait caster, that's fine. Grab a spinning rod, a medium fast or a medium heavy spinning rod. Have 10 or t preferably 12 pound test leader uh, tied to your, your mainline braid, your 20 pound braid or you know whatever you use on there. But uh, I wanna have a little bit bigger, heavier leader than I normally would. I normally would put like an eight or a 10, but a 12, you're, you're driving home a pretty good size hook um, for that line. So I wanna have something a little bit heavier so I can, I can set the hook a little bit better. Um, the other components that you're going to want is you're going to want a, a 4 aught extra wide gap hook. This is a Gamagatsu EWG. I think this one's a 3 aught because I don't have any 4 aught in the boat or I'm not going to dig in my box and get something. I'll use a 3 aught too. It's not going to make any difference. Um, the smaller the hook, the more action you get anyway. And a big swivel. Big, I don't know what size this is. I'll put it down in the description, but just a large barrel swivel. Um, to me, size doesn't matter. I just look, oh, there's a big one. I put it in the box and I'm good. All right, so the way I'm going to rig it, first thing I'm going to do is using either a Palomar knot or an improved clinch knot, clinch knot whichever one you know, I'm going to tie the swivel onto the end of my fishing line. All right, one side of the swivel. All right, then I'm going to go up about, oh, 20 inches or so. Cut my line. Flip the swivel over. So I got line here. Flip the swivel over, and I'll tie another Palomar knot. All right. On the end of my leader, I'm going to tie the hook, and that's it for the rig. Now, my favorite color, floating worm, is methylate. Zoom methylate trick worm. The other colors I'm going to use, and I'll try if they're still spawning, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try yellow. I don't know what it is about yellow. I wish they would make a lizard without the black flake and just make me that color lizard. But I don't know, they, when, you're, when they're bedding, they seem to hate that yellow color a little bit more and they really will attack it. But I'm gonna Texas rig this worm. And the key is, is to make sure you do it as straight down the center as you possibly can. So I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna look and I'm basically gonna line everything up right down the center. I'm gonna come out. Flip that hook around like that, and then I'm gonna look, I'm gonna lay my, my hook alongside the, the worm and see where that hook's gonna go in and where it's gonna come out. I'm gonna go to that spot, go straight across the worm like, like that. And then if I'm fishing a lot of cover, I will pull that worm up and tuck that tip of that hook in that worm a little bit, if you guys can see. All right, so that's how you rig it. Let's go jerk it around a little bit and see if we can't catch some fish and I'll show you how I fish it. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're going to, we're, we're throwing a, a light bait, especially on a bait caster. I'm gonna make sure that my base bait caster is adjusted right. Okay, so I'm gonna take, this is the new, con, the Z slide from 13 Fishing. I'm gonna take the 
I'm going to undo the side plate, take the, the brakes, and I'm going to turn them all the way off. Close the side plate back. Okay, hit the button, tighten up the cast control knob, and then let go of the spool, and then loosen up that cast control knob until I get it to fall super slow. Let me show you guys. I just get it to fall super slow, and that's about where I want it. And what I like about the Z-Slide, this is a pretty cool little deal, is that if I if I, I feel like it's too tight, all I got to do is just flip that switch up, and that adds one brake to it. So done, done with that take, and I go back in, and I turn this up to three, and I might go up to four, but I think three is going to be just fine. All right, so how to fish it, and why am I fishing a floating worm? A floating worm is a reaction bait. It's a, it's a bait that from, from post-spawn, from right when the bass get done spawning, not all, you know, it, not all the bass have to be spawned for you to do this, but from about spawn all the way through the summer, the shallow bass that are in that shallow cover, this is one of those things that it, I don't know if it excites them or what, but I can get, even in super clear water, can get a, ba a bass to come out and hit this. I remember the very first ba bass that I caught on a floating worm it was on Clark's Hill, super clear water. I mean, you could see 16 feet deep that year. It was really, really clear. Well, I was fishing about four feet deep on this flat and I threw out with a methylate trick worm, jerking around and I watched this four pounder come out of literally nowhere. I don't know where it came from, but follow that thing up. And it was, you know, still half a cast out and just come up and just go whoop. And the hardest thing for me to do was to wait to set the hook. So we'll talk about that in a second but anyway so i mean that was that's what got me so hooked on throwing a a a floating worm but that was during the summertime post spawn the males are guarding fry you've got balls of fry that are hiding in the in the shallow bushes and the shallow grass and the cover and stuff like that and there's always a male close by and this is a fun way to catch them but let me recommend that if you're going to do it this way, I don't, I don't, rec I don't like people who do it during the during a tournament because they take that male away from those fry and those fry are going to get eaten. Uh, but if you're just fishing for fun, quickly take it off the hook, put it back in the water, let it go back and guard its fry. But they're a lot of fun to catch. So, but like I said, this works all summer long too. And I'm literally see now that's a little bit too tight, but I'm literally just going to cover water with it. Okay, so I'm working along the bank throwing it up as close to the bank as I can. Jerk, jerk, pause. Watch my rod. Jerk, jerk, pause. Jerk, jerk, pause. Okay, and if I'm fishing a blueback herring lake, which is kind of where these things originated, or at least using this color methylate, um, it is, uh, uh, I, I work it a lot faster. If you are one of those guys that don't want to go watch the video about how to, how to cast a, uh, a light lure, on a, on a bait caster, let me show you real quick. Okay, so you set it a little lo little loose. I want it to fall just a little bit loose, and I'm going to keep loosening it up until I get better and better at it, or as I get better and better at it. Now, usually when we throw a bait caster, let me get up to the tip or cast a bait caster. The swivel or the bait is you know eight to ten inches from the tip of the rod, which is about right here. Now to throw a light lure on a bait caster. I want about 15 or 20 inches. I'm actually going to let even more of it out there. The more behind, I want it to be able to load the rod up a little bit. And it's not really a whip cast. It is a sweep cast like you would with a Carolina rig. So I'm going to bring it, and the video shows it a whole lot better than I can do it here. But I'm going to bring it back, and I'm going to let go a little bit early, and I'm going to cast that, that bait out there. It's difficult to learn, but once you learn, you really, re it's, it's wonderful to be able to fish this thing on a bait caster. You have more power, more action, and you can make more cast and cover more water with your bait caster than you can with a spinning rod. So that's why I say if you can learn how to do it, do it. But anyway, back to fishing it. I'm working the bank and I'm, I'm really concentrating on stuff like right up here, we've got some bushes hanging in the water and I'm not sure if there's still fry here. We're a little bit late doing this at, uh, for the spawn but there could be bass shallow. On this lake right now, they're about 10 feet deep, but we'll see if we can find some males or anything shallow. But jerk, jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, pause. And you're gonna wh whip it around and it's doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And you're like, how in the world is a bass gonna hit something that bright and that ugly? Honestly, I got no clue. 
All I know is that it works. Now, this is great around docks. This is great around like brush and stuff like that. It's weedless. You can throw it right in the middle of a laydown, work it through and out of the laydown. But the biggest key is the hook set. Okay, so you can see the bait. And my biggest bad habit with this is if I see the bait, and if I can see the bait and the bass hits the bait, I'm going to set the hook too early. I, I don't think of it as a topwater, but you really have to think of it. It is, a, it is a topwater bait when it comes to the hook set. So I'm going to throw it out, pop, pop, pause, pop, pop, pause. And when I get a hook set, I've got to go one, two, three, bam. Because if I don't, I'm going to jerk it out of the fish's mouth. Now, adjustments that you can make to your trick worm. All right, so I use a small nail weight. Um, this is a lead one, tungsten one, but I just, I just grab a small one out of the box. I don't really care about what the weight is. Now there's two places that I'm gonna put this weight or that I could put this weight to change the action. The first one is I'll stick it right in the meat of the, of the worm right here. Okay, so right along the meat, I'm gonna stick it in and I'm gonna let it sit right here. And I do that if I want the bait to fall horizontal. So I'm jerking it and it falls horizontal. Okay, that's great. It's wonderful. My favorite way to hook it is I stick it right in the meat of that tail. Now, you can use a lead one or a tungsten one. I, I used to use little pieces of coat hanger that I would cut off of a steel coat hanger and stick down in there. And they worked great. It wasn't super heavy. It, it had a little less of a glide and it's almost better than using a lead one. But I'll stick it in the tail, okay, just like this. Let me see. I don't know if I can show you in the, on the camera, but I'm going to do it, and then I'll show it to you. So I stick it in the tail. Try to keep it in the center of the, of the worm. There. And it's sitting right in the middle of that worm, or in the tail of that worm. And what happens is that as it's sinking, it sinks away from you a little bit and falls back down. It's got a really cool action. Um, and that's if I'm having trouble getting the fish to commit. If I have them following, I'll add that nail weight. And that's exactly what it'll do. It'll start to sink and it'll sink down and go right back into their face a little bit. Absolutely a dynamite way of getting them to bite. So perfect, perfect. So let's go see if we can catch a fish on it. All right, so I want you to look. We got a great sunny day, sun's up, everything else. Well, the places I'm gonna focus as I'm working the bank specific, you know, as I'm working the bacon and, and I see these spots, I'm really going to take my time. You see this shaded pocket still in the shade and the bass will back up and back up into that shade until there's no shade and then they'll move out a lot of times. So I'm really going to, when I get to a spot like this, I'm going to work it hard. And this is an ideal spot. It's got lay downs under the water right here. It's got uh, bushes in the water. The lake's a little bit up. You got rising water. We had some good rain day for yesterday. So maybe some of the bass have moved way up into the shallowest, shallowest water. But they're going to stay in that shade as long as they can because it, it, it provides an ambush spot and it provides a spot for the, you know, the fry to hide if it's, if they're post-spawn, that kind of stuff. Shad will stay up in there a little bit longer. Matter of fact, I just saw a shad pop right there. And I'm just going to work this area real good, real slowly in that shady area. Other places you're going to cast along is, you know, lay downs, bushes. Um, yeah, the shad are spawning because I just saw another one pop up. But uh, lay downs, bushes, uh, rocks, everything. Anything you see shallow that a bass can hide in and around is where I'd be throwing it. And like I said, I've caught them in, in, on straight flats with no cover doing it as well but i was just going between places when i caught that big four pounder but yeah i'm just gonna work it there's got to be bass up in here with this much shad the shad are definitely spawning pop pop pause and i'm gonna play around with how long i pause it i'm gonna play around with uh with how many times i jerk it and I, there's no rhythm to it i hate to get into a rhythm i feel like a rhythm is something a bass will look and it just looks unnatural and so I try not to count the numbers or anything like that. It's hard for me because I love music and I've been playing music my whole life and, I, and I'm and i a rhythm person, so I just get into that rhythm and it's like, and I catch myself all the time doing that. Oh, there's one following it. Oh, he didn't hit it. Did I had one follow it all the way out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that nail, that nail weight out, play around a little bit, put that nail weight down there where I can find it. And typically if I was fishing, and I had that male come out. 
I would grab something else like a Texas rigged creature bait or, or you know, something I could flip back in there. Cinco is just perfect. I'll flip it back in there because he's shown himself. I know he's there. He may not want something to work that fast or something like that, but a good follow-up bait is something I would have handy. Uh, a Cinco is perfect, is absolutely perfect for that. So definitely. And you know, a trick worm, a floating worm is a good follow-up bait for a buzz bait. If you're following a buzz bait and you get a fish to miss that buzz bait, follow up with a weightless, you know, a weightless trick worm or even a fluke, same sort of deal. Always have a follow up bait, and this is a really good one. All right, so as I'm working along the bank, one of the key things, and I know the lighting's horrible right now, but one of the key things is I want to parallel the bank as much as I possibly can. Look how far away I am from the bank. Not very far at all. Okay, skip it up underneath there. Get the backlash out. Okay. And I'm just parallel on the bank. I want to kind of keep it as close to the cover and as close to the bank as I possibly can as I'm working it. And this holds true with anything you're fishing shallow. If you want to get more bites, you got to keep the bait in the strike zone a lot longer than, um, or as long as you possibly can. And throwing straight at the bank and bringing back out to the boat, um, or even sitting on the bank and throwing straight out and bringing it back to, you know, back to the bank. It's gonna. It's kind of counterproductive. You really want to keep it out, you know, out into where the bass are, you know, where the bass are willing to come out and grab it. You know, a lot of times the bass are turned and looking towards the bank, and they're looking for something to swim between them and the bank that they can pin up against the bank and 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 catch. So a lot of times, the closer to the bank you are, the better. The closest to the bottom you are, the better. All right. So one of the things somebody's going to ask is, well, what is the swivel for? There's a couple of reasons. The main reason for a swivel is to prevent line twist because of the way this thing works, you get that, that bait will, will spin a lot while you're jerking it around. And so you don't want to get line twist in your line because eventually it's going to just bird's nest and jack, up, jack it up, you know, even if you're fishing, especially if you're fishing a spinning rod, but bait caster, same thing. It's just going to jack it up and just going to make it difficult. The other reason is I want to have it, give it a little bit of weight way up front to keep the bait down. I'm doing everything I can to keep the bait under the water because I don't really want to tick it very tick the surface very often. So I'm using fluorocarbon line that sinks, and I'm using a, uh, a you know a large swivel up front. So that's the that's the reason for the swivel. All right, well I gave it the good old college try. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't force feed them, and that is just the way it is. But uh, guys, take take the tips that I gave you in this video, take them out try them out it ain't about me catching fish it's about you catching fish and i want you to catch fish but like i always say be sure to introduce somebody to fishing introduce them to my channel let me help you teach them how to fish more importantly get out on the water go out and catch some fish and have a great day we'll see you